me to go over again. My name is Jenny Kedward. I work at Dakota County and Environmental Resources. And today joining us is John Exner, who will take us through all the organics need to know information. And uh, this is International Compost Awareness Week. So thanks for joining us today. Uh, just for some housekeeping, you can ask questions through the chat function or the Q&A box. You'll find those in a black strip at the bottom of your, your screen. Uh, and you can pop, you can click on either one to ask questions. I'll be monitoring questions. And if I don't get to your question right away, it's because I know that John will answer it coming up and I'll save questions towards the end. So with that, I'll turn it over to John. Thank you, Jenny, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, my name is John Exner, and I also uh, work for the Dakota County Environmental Resources Department, and I'll be giving you a uh, rundown on the county's residential organics drop-off program, and really just want to thank you for, for spending a few minutes with us today and um, learning a little bit more about the county's organics drop-off program. So today we're going to talk about why we're collecting organics in Dakota County and, an over, and we'll do an overview of the residential drop site program. Uh, we'll cover some details about what's accepted and what isn't in the program. And then we'll also go over some frequently asked questions that, that we uh, receive um, frequently. Um, and at the end, uh, as Jenny indicated, you can go on the chat or the Q&A and, and ask your questions. Um, if you if something pops up uh, after the uh, the meeting today or the the training today, then uh, I'll share my email address with you and my phone number and and uh, you guys can reach out to me anytime a question comes up about the program. I always like answering them because uh, oftentimes I find out more too. So um, just if you've got questions, let us know. So the first thing that we always like to talk about is uh, if organics or composting are new terms for you, you're not alone. We often get calls from people wondering what organics are and if certain items are compostable. Organics in a nutshell are anything that were once alive, all food, non-recyclable paper like napkins, tissues, and paper towels, and other materials like egg cartons, greasy pizza boxes, and even coffee filters uh, are compostable. So how does the organics drop-off program work or the, the, the overall process? Well, it, it's kind of a full circle uh, process. The first step is collecting your food scraps from your home. And you can see up in, in the, the top photo here, uh, a young man collecting his food scraps uh, at his counter. And when you fill up your certified compostable bag, you can see these green bags, maybe on this lower photo here, the county does provide these uh, green certified compostable bags. So when you fill that up, you'll wanna tie it off and bring it to the organics drop-off location closest to you. Uh, the collected organics are then brought to a commercial compost facility located right here in Dakota County. It's actually over by the, the little town of Coates, which is off Highway 52 and County Road 46. It does have a Rosemount address, but it's uh, probably closer to uh, Coates, kind of in between Rosemount and Coates. So not far, it doesn't travel too terribly far. And comp composting is the process where organic matter is broken down by natural bacteria, moisture, and oxygen. Um, when compost is finished, it's a rich black soil, it's full of nutrients, and it's, it's really great for plant growth. We use compost in our gardens and our fields and ditches uh, to plant new crop, plant, to plant new plants, crops, uh, erosion control measures, and, uh, and then also the mainly uh, food. And uh, once we consume the food, we collect that again and the process uh, basically starts all over. So it really is a, a full circle process. And we get questions all the time and, and some of the biggest ones that we get uh, often are, you know, usually just out of curiosity is, is why is the county doing this and why does it matter if, if we collect our food scraps from our home? And we like to tell people that there's, there's quite a few reasons why, uh, uh, why the county is uh, interested in, in capturing organic waste and, and keeping it out of landfills. Um, the, the first thing, uh, in a statewide waste characterization study, basically a, a waste sort of various uh, uh, disposal facilities located across the, the state, it was found that nearly one third of what's in our trash is organic material like food scraps. Collecting organics for composting keeps this massive amount of material out of landfills. This affects us on a local level as the Dakota County Board of Commissioners have adopted a goal of providing a healthy environment for quality with quality natural areas. So it's, it's a county, one, one reason it's a county goal. Um, composting organics help keep this renewable resource out of landfills and back into the earth in the form of compost. And on a uh, regional level, 
Dakota County is accountable to the Minnesota's uh, pollution control agencies. Uh, laws and rules. And one of the state laws does require all Twin City metropolitan counties. So Dakota County and Scott, Carver, Hennepin, Ramsey, Washington, and Anoka to uh, put plans in place and implement programs that will increase our overall recycling rate, both traditional recycling, what you would often put out at your curb, along with organics, uh, capturing organics. And uh, that rate uh, per state law is, is set at 75% by the year 2030 uh, to comply with state statute. And currently, Dakota County as a whole is recycling about 55% of its solid waste by weight. So out of all of our uh, trash items or things that we would look to throw away, 55% uh, is either uh, captured for recycling or uh, composting or some other food uh, diversion programs like food to, uh, food to animals, food to people, um, and uh, yard waste as well is included in that rate. So the county is, as I mentioned, 55%, and we need to get to 75%. The metro area's rate is 48% uh, if you combine all seven metro counties. So we're doing a little bit better than, than the average metropolitan county, but we still have a long way to go to get that 75% rate in the next uh, seven years or so. And one thing about organics is they're a very heavy component of the waste stream. So diverting them away from landfills will help Dakota County achieve compliance with the state statute. And in fact, one, one cubic yard, which is a, a three foot by three foot by three foot, uh, weighs about 500 pounds in food scraps. So um, even, a, even a small amount of food waste really adds up. And on a global scale, organic material buried in a landfill undergo anaerobic decomposition. And anaerobic decomposition uh, produces methane. Um, with anaerobic decomposition, uh, materials decompose without the presence of oxygen. So one, they take a really long time to um, do breakdown and, and they produce a, a, a greenhouse gas called methane. And with, a, uh, with the drop-off program, your, your food scraps are delivered to a commercial compost facility. That facility I mentioned that's over by Coates. Uh, and when it goes to a compost facility and it's put in a uh, windrow, it undergoes a, a decomposition process called aerobic decomposition, which uh, requires oxygen uh, for the process to work. So air is, is penetrating uh, the food scraps and the uh, other compostable materials uh, for that process to work to, to make the finished product of compost. And because it is exposed to the oxygen, it produces a carbon dioxide instead of methane. And um, a little stat that I that I find uh, interesting is that the United States Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, states that pound for pound, the comparative impact of methane emissions is 25 times more effective at trapping heat in the atmosphere than carbon dioxide over a 100-year period. So uh, it really does uh, produce less, uh, I guess, uh, methane by composting material and and methane is one of those uh, more harmful greenhouse gas uh, uh, I guess particular matters if you will so um, food saving your food scraps and composting them is is, is just very beneficial to the environment and and other uh, <clears throat> goals and uh, requirements of the state so we really appreciate your interest in the program, if you're if you're not participating, we appreciate that you're uh, here to learn more about it. And if you are participating, we, we really thank you for, for doing your part. So as I mentioned, uh, the county has several uh, organics drop sites. We actually have eight residential uh, drop-off site locations and they are at Thompson County Park in West St. Paul, Lebanon Hills Regional Park in Egan. Uh, there's one at the Lakeville Water Treatment Facility uh, there's one at the mulch store, which is uh, is actually the commercial compost facility where all the other drop sites uh, bring their material to. That that facility over by Coates is called the mulch store. Um, there's also a drop off site in Mendicota Park in Mendota Heights, at Civic Center Park in Burnsville, and the Farmington Maintenance Facility, and then uh, we have one over at the Dakota, Dakota County Transportation Shop in Hastings. So we've got eight sites, and they're they're pretty spread out uh, across the county. Uh, we are working with a couple of other cities, Apple Valley and Rosemount, uh, to get uh, drop sites uh, located in both of those cities, and and uh, we still have some, um, I guess some, uh, I guess site locations and some other uh, particular uh, roles to develop before those sites get going. But we're hoping, hopeful to get uh, both of those up by the end of this year. So 
Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, there may be sites coming closer to you uh, than, the, than the current eight that we have. Um, the sites are available to all county residents. You don't have to live in one of those cities to, to participate at one of those sites. If you live in, live in Burnsville, but you work in West St. Paul, you can certainly use the one in West St. Paul or, or vice versa. And as I mentioned, Dakota County does provide certified compostable bags. Uh, we'll mail you a couple when you sign up for the program. And then there's also uh, receptacles at each of the drop-off sites where we stock them with the certified compostable bags. So organics drop-off, some of you may uh, do some backyard composting, and we just want to make a note that organics drop-off programs are a bit different than backyard composting because we can simply handle more materials at, at the drop-off program, like meat, bones, dairy, and uh, the non-recyclable paper, like paper towels, napkins, and tissues. Organics collected from the drop-off sites are delivered to uh, the commercial compost facility. And at those commercial composting facilities, the, the piles uh, uh, reach a much higher temperature than they would in your backyard bin. Um, so that high heat allows those dense types of foods, meat and bones, to break down more efficiently into compost. Meat, bones, and dairy products are very slow to break down in backyard composting piles. Um, they just don't get enough heat. And in the wintertime, they just freeze. And um, those types of materials in backyard compost bins can attract critters. So um, with the drop-off site, we are able to handle it just simply because of the uh, massive size of the, the, the compost piles at the mulch store. So uh, materials that we accept at the organics drop-off program uh, include any and all food scraps. So again, meat and bones, pasta, rice, dairy, fruits, fruit peels, vegetables, and vegetable peels. Um, I get calls a lot about uh, peanut shells and other shells uh, from various uh, types of nuts, and those are acceptable. Uh, rinds on vegetables are acceptable. Um, the food uh, that you bring can be moldy. So if you forget about it in your fridge, it can be rotten, it can be half eaten, and it can be frozen. Um, so it, it, it doesn't matter what type of food waste it is, it can be composted and we do accept it in the program. Uh, I mentioned just briefly at the top of the uh, uh, training uh, that non-recyclable paper, like paper towels, tissues, napkins, um, paper towel rolls and toilet paper rolls, egg cartons and uh, greasy pizza boxes are also compostable. So um, you can collect that material for composting too, as opposed to throwing it in your trash. Those are types of, those are types of paper that don't recycle well. Recyclers don't want them because they don't, they, they're, they've already been recycled multiple times and the fibers on them get too short to continue recycling, but they compost great and, and uh, we're happy to receive them and, and compost them as opposed to bringing them to a landfill. Again, we also accept coffee grounds and filters. So if you make a pot of coffee in the morning, you can certainly uh, compost your coffee grounds and filters. And, um, and then also um, trimmings from your household plants and, and dead flowers uh, that you keep in your house. We, I'll get into this in, in a second, but we don't take yard waste like grass clippings or even, even uh, uh, you know, uh, your vegetable stocks in the fall after, after harvest. We just don't have the space for yard waste, but we do take a small amount of, of trimmings or, or some dead flower petals from, from your household plants. And as I have mentioned, the certified uh, compostable bags are provided at each of the drop site. Um, and we also, if you haven't signed up and you're interested in doing so, we will mail a couple of those to you with our welcome kit that we send out. But if you're already in the program, you know that the, the bags are provided at the site. The size of the bags that we provide to participants are two and a half gallons in size. So they're not huge bags, but they're, they're appropriate for a, a food waste compost uh, program or drop-off program, simply because it, it, you know, it's about a week's worth of material and you don't, you won't want to probably hold on to it much more than a week um, unless you're freezing it. And, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment as well. Um, the bags that we do provide are certified compostable by a third party company called the Biodegradable Products Institute. You may hear BPI, uh, uh, you may hear of these bags referred to as BPI certified bags. And BPI, again, is just short for Biodegradable Products Institute. They test the bags to ensure they break down at a commercial compost facility and, uh, and not leave any trace plastics behind. So um, just always, if you're, if you're interested in the types of bags that, uh, that you can compost, they have to be um, BPI certified. And also, if the, the bags are too small for your household, I know some households are real busy and uh, one of the bags uh, probably wouldn't uh, suffice for them for the week. So if, if, your bag, if the bags that the county provides are too small for your household, you can certainly uh, purchase bags of, uh, online that are a little bit bigger. 
And if you are interested in purchasing your own bag to have a stash uh, of certified compostable bags at home, shoot me an email and I'll send you a link to a reputable vendor. That way, uh, you know that the bag is going to break down. And, and uh, I, I kind of like having the peace of mind knowing that you're, you're working with a reputable vendor if, if that's the case. Um, the other thing, and you'll see it on the screen here, is that you can use a basic brown ba paper bag that you would get uh, after you do your grocery shopping. Um, many people uh, use the compostable bags, the green compostable bags that we provide for their food scraps, which a lot of times food scraps will have some residual moisture. Um, and, and so they work good for that. And they use the paper bags for their dry items like the paper towels and the napkins and the facial tissue. So um, that's that's a just an idea that uh, might work well for you. Um, those uh, the compostable bags are, are more. I don't, I hate to use the word plastic because they're not plastic, but they, they kind of look like it. They do, they'll do a better job of, of holding moisture than a uh, brown paper bag would. So um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe use a little bit of both for, um, you know, one for food scraps and one for your dry uh, non-recyclable paper. And I went over uh, some of the things that the program accepts, and, and the program does accept a lot of material when you think about all the different types of food and, and uh, how food ends up um, either not being eaten or, or getting bad or, or, you know, it just doesn't get uh, consumed in a timely fashion. So that's, that's the primary uh, materials that, that can be brought, and it, it encompasses a lot of things. But uh, we can't take everything with this program. Um, as I mentioned uh, previously, yard waste is something that that we cannot take like grass clippings, tree and shrub brushes, leaves, garden waste, um, pumpkins. Um, those materials can be brought to yard waste composting facilities and there's five or six of them throughout Dakota County. Um, or you can have those items collected from your hauler or compost them in your backyard, but we don't want them at our drop site because we wouldn't have capacity for all the food scraps if we, if we had yard waste there at, at these sites as well. Um, we don't take diapers or sanitary products. Uh, those would go in the trash. We don't take cartons. You can recycle cartons now through curbside programs. We don't take fast food wrappers. Um, like if you go to McDonald's and get a cheeseburger, uh, that wrapper would have to go in the trash because they are lined with a plastic, a lot of, a lot of fast food wrappers. One thing that a lot of people um, like to, would like to be able to throw uh, or place with their uh, organics is dryer lint and dryer sheets. However, we found that uh, dryer lint and dryer sheets contain polyesters from clothing. And so we don't want any of that uh, dryer lint or dryer sheets thrown in with your compost because they do have uh, synthetic fibers from our clothes. Um, cleaning or baby wipes, those are trash because they do have a residual chemical on them. Stickers on produce, that annoying little sticker that comes on an apple, that is trash because they don't break down in a compost pile. So if you do have a produce sticker, please throw that in your trash. We don't take any pet waste, litter, or bedding. Uh, state statute does not allow those types of items to be uh, composted. So uh, manage those as a trash. Uh, styrofoam obviously is a big thing to, to keep out of uh, organics and, and throw that away. There's, there's just no uh, good market for that other than the trash. Um, we don't take uh, products that aren't certified by the BPI. So if, if uh, you're at a party or hosting a party and you're using uh, disposable uh, dinnerware, um, we ask that, that unless you know it's BPI certified, don't place those materials in with your, with your organic materials. Just throw those in your trash. We don't accept grease or oil. That's a question I get quite often. Um, the grease and oil, when you bring, brought to a composting facility, the, have you ever noticed how water and, and oil just kind of fight with one another? And the same principle applies at a composting facility. So if you have uh, amounts of grease or oil, please bring that to the recycling zone in Egan. It, it is free to dispose of, and uh, they'll accept that material there. With one caveat, if you are just uh, um, cleaning out maybe a pan with a paper towel, and it's got just a little bit of um, non-liquefied grease, if it's just kind of that um, grease look on the paper towel from absorbing some of that liquid, that can be composted. We just don't want any freestanding grease or oil dumped into the organics drop-off sites. Um, another question that I do get a lot, uh, paper towels, as mentioned, are compostable. However, if you use some type of cleaner, like a 409 or a bleach or something to clean your counters, we ask that you throw uh, any paper towels with, with cleaning products into your trash. And then frozen food boxes, I, I mentioned that greasy pizza boxes are acceptable. Frozen food boxes are not. Those, are, uh, those would go in your trash uh, because they are lined with plastic. And 
Um, Jenny might be able to correct me at the end. Um, there may be some haulers that accept frozen food boxes, but I think uh, from my knowledge is they're, they're basically trash at this point because they often have a moisture uh, barrier in them to uh, protect them from freezer burn. So don't, don't throw those in the organics drop-off sites. And then the last thing that uh, I get a lot of questions on are takeout boxes. I know if you go to like, I guess Chipotle is a good example. They have a box or a, their bowl that looks kind of like it would be compostable. It's kind of that egg carton feel. However, they generally do have a plastic moisture barrier. And so we ask that you don't throw any takeout boxes into the organics drop-off sites. And even if it was compostable, just not having that knowledge of if it's been certified or will officially break down, just it, it gives the composting facility uh, just some nerves just because they they would have to sort that out and, and throw it in their trash so if you have a if you go out to eat and you have a takeout box um, just throw that in your trash unless you know it's BPI certified which in Dakota County I haven't heard of but too many um, restaurants that are providing that uh, that type of product so those are some things to keep out of the uh, organics compost uh, receptacles and we get the question often, why should I participate or why is it important for my family? And uh, we have a couple of responses to that, I guess. Um, one is that the average household does generate about nine pounds of organic material waste per week. So you'd be able to divert that material from your trash. That's a lot when you think about it. Nine pounds every week uh, adds up real quick. And that's an average house. So some houses might produce a little bit less. Some uh, would obviously produce a little bit more. Um, and by diverting your trash uh, for composting, uh, you may be able to reduce the size of your trash container and pay less, less money each month. Um, to, trash in Minnesota is taxed at 9.75%. Um, and I think I have another, I, I'll talk a little bit more about um, some of the ways you can save money coming up. So I'll save that. Um, if you're a backyard composter, you can do both. You can, you can continue backyard composting and you can participate in the organic drop prof program. And if you are a backyard composter, I encourage you to continue doing so. Uh, that's how I got my start in organics, uh, having a backyard composting bin with my dad growing up. And uh, so I still uh, appreciate and admire backyard composters because um, it's, a, it's a nice way to not have to travel. You get to reap the benefits of, of your um, homemade compost. And, uh, and then you can take advantage of the organic drop off sites for uh, those those denser materials like the meats, the bones, and the dairy, you can bring those items in. Or even in the winter time, if your backyard composting um, gets a little cold and, and it isn't really breaking down, uh, the drop sites are a great uh, remedy for that winter time uh, composting. And then using compost has lots of benefits as well. Uh, it's very nutrient rich. It does reduce the need for chemical fertilizers in your yard or garden, and it does reduce soil erosion if you have any issues. Uh, in your backyard. Um, I know uh, the county included is looking to purchase uh, compost for uh, uh, ditch work to uh, uh, reduce soil erosion and also to establish a more robust uh, plant layer to, uh, to kind of just limit that soil erosion and, and get some deep rooted uh, plants and, and uh, seeds down that would hold that soil in place. And lastly, there's just, there's no cost or commitment to participate in the program. Um, you can come and go as you please. All of our sites are, all of our sites with the exception of one are open from five in the morning until 10 at night. Um, if there's a busy week where you can't make it, that's fine. It, it, you're not signing up for anything and, and it, it's a free program. So if it, if it works for you, that's great. If it doesn't, uh, we understand that there is a, a, a time component to it, but we, we do encourage you to give it a try. And, um, you know, usually you can always make something work uh, if once you once you put your mind to it. So um, give it a try if you haven't started already. And uh, speaking of, uh, it is easy to uh, get to get registered. Participating again, is, it's very easy. We do ask uh, in order to track participation. It helps us with right sizing the dumpsters and um, selling the program so we can get more sites uh, closer to people. Um, is that we ask all participants to sign up for the program um, just so we can send them a welcome kit and provide some education before they start collecting organics at their home. Um, the easiest way to register for the program is on the Dakota County website. Um, you just go to the county's website you can go to Google and search Dakota County. And uh, right in the middle of the uh, county's webpage, there's a search button. If you just type in organics drop off, you'll, you'll be brought to the program page and there's a big red button on there that you can, uh, that says sign up online. Uh, we asked just a couple of questions, your name, your address, how you heard about the program and which site you'll be using the most. 
Uh, and then a, a few days later, we'll mail you a welcome kit that's got uh, compostable bags and it's got uh, a list of acceptable items, um, some tips and tricks also for collecting at home um, and uh, kind of some uh, information on how to get to each site and where they're located. So um, that's kind of how you go about uh, getting signed up. Um, once you get the kit, you start collecting your organics and, and non-recyclable paper. You bring them to the drop-off location and, and grab a couple of free certified compostable bags. And um, again, that full circle process, you'd start, start all over again. And setting up at home, this is this may be the this might be the biggest question I get. A lot of people are wondering how should I store my organics and where do you put them? And so we we do have a couple of examples on on uh, on the screen here, you don't need anything, you don't need a fancy container to start collecting organics at home. You can use just about anything from a coffee container, as you'll see there, to an ice cream pail. Um, the one thing that we do suggest is that you label it so everyone knows what should go inside of that um, food scrap bucket. Um, you can also purchase kitchen compost buckets, food scrap buckets online. Um, if you go to Amazon, uh, that's just, a, I'm just throwing that out there because it's easy. There's certainly other uh, vendors that have them too. Uh, but if you go to Amazon and just search kitchen compost bucket, you'll find something, um, a, a bucket to suit your style from uh, ceramic uh, containers that are quite pricey to uh, really economical plastic containers. So um, you shouldn't have to spend a lot of money and you shouldn't have to spend any any money at all if, if you're um, not too fussy about what you uh, keep your food scraps in. I use a coffee container uh, and it works really well for me. Um, so that's just a suggestion. Um, you'll find something that works for you and your family. Um, and again, the compostable bags that we do provide are two and a half gallons in size. So when you're looking to uh, either obtain or create a, a kitchen compost bucket, you're gonna wanna keep it somewhat the size of a, of a coffee container, maybe a little bigger. The bags we provide are 16 inches wide by 17 inches tall. And again, that equates to about two and a half gallons. So a lot of times you'll see uh, bathroom uh, containers, waste containers that are three gallons or so, um, that, would be, that would be a little bit too big for the bags we provide. So find something that's less than, I would recommend no bigger than two gallons. That way the uh, bags kind of fold over to the side. Um, and then a, a, another tip and, and uh, something I do as well um, is they keep their food scrap container inside the refrigerator. So you'll see the bottom two photos there, the coffee containers and a refrigerator, as well as just the Tupperware container that's labeled with organic. So very simple. Um, but uh, keeping the uh, food scraps inside your refrigerator uh, will keep the will keep that material a little bit fresher. Um, maybe not produce as much odor, and it'll also reduce the number of trips you'll you'll need to make. I do know, um, and this is all dependent on how much uh, space you have available in your freezer. Some people do freeze their material when they when they get a full bag, and then they just have to make one trip a month or so, uh, depending on how much room they have. I don't have that that uh, type of space, so I go about once a week to the drop sites. And uh, at this point, we'll go over some frequently asked questions. And again, um, if you guys have questions, feel free to, to enter them in the chat and we'll, we'll cover those um, once we get uh, here in a couple of minutes. Um, so where do the organic, uh, where do the collected organics go? And I think I've covered this. They are brought to a commercial composting facility over by Coates. It's the mulch, it's called the mulch store. Um, and, and if you don't know where Coates is, it's kind of in between Rosemount. The drop or the, the, the mulch store is kind of in between Rosemount and Coates. Um, and the, we do get this, especially this time of year, I get this question quite a bit, is the compost from this program made available to residents? And the compost produced from this program that we receive at the drop sites are delivered to the mulch store and, and it becomes the property of the mulch store once we deliver the materials there. The mulch store uh, does sell their product, um, but it's not available for free at any of the drop-off sites. Um, the, the mulch store sells a compost and mixed compost blend uh, you can visit their website at uh, mulchstoremn.com, and uh, and they've got some really good information about uh, their different types of uh, compost blends and um, how much you would need to purchase for a backyard garden or just even top dressing your lawn to um, reduce any chemical uh, fertilizers that you uh, maybe historically have laid down. Um, a thin layer of compost works really well, and, and the mulch store has information on, on uh, those application rates. So that's something to keep in mind if, if you're looking to um, maybe uh, purchase some composting this year. And if questions about that come up, again, feel free to email me and I'll put you in touch with the, with the right people out there to, to make sure you, you get some uh, better information about application rates and 
um, and those kinds of things, how much you might need to buy based on based on what you would like to uh, perhaps fertilize naturally. Um, whoops, I went backwards there. Um, so is organics composting better than using a garbage disposal? And um, I always tell people that wastewater treatment plants, uh, they do require a lot of energy and other resources to produce or process solids out of the wastewater, um, including food scraps. Uh, so using and also using a garbage disposal also wastes a good deal of water to effectively work. So um, in my opinion, composting is much better than than uh, sending that that food scrap down the drain and um, it just you could have issues with your food with your uh, garbage disposal and uh, also just the extra energy and resources needed to run those uh, uh, industrial wastewater treatment plants. Um, and I, I touched on this just a, a, a real briefly. I mentioned I'd come back to it, but um, people ask if they'll save any money by composting uh, your organics. And um, with if you collect and deliver your organics to the drop site, you you might be able to reduce. You should be able to reduce the size of your uh, curbside trash container, uh, which would result in lower collection fees and less taxes. On the screen, you'll see that it, uh, household trash is taxed at nine point seven five percent, which is very expensive. So if you can reduce the size of your uh, trash container, uh, you would be taxed less. Well, one, you'd be uh, uh, charged less for having a, a, a smaller um, curbside cart. And then also by being charged less, your tax rate would would be lower. So yes, you can save money uh, by participating in this program, um, By but you would have to reduce the size of your trash at home. Organics and recycling in Minnesota are not taxed. So uh, there is an incentive to uh, recycle and compost as much as you can uh, to avoid paying those taxes uh, through your garbage hauler. Um, another question we get a lot is, will collecting organics smell? Does it stink up my house? Um, organics will smell the same as your normal household trash. It's, uh, it's the same waste you have now, it's just separated. So um, you, it shouldn't smell any, any worse than, than what your situation is right now. Um, to minimize potential odors, because some people might forget about it or or they might not clean their kitchen compost bucket. That's probably where more of the odors are going to stem from than than the actual food scraps if you manage them properly and um, and kind of take care of them. But to minimize potential odors, include uh, some food soil paper products such as the paper towels, napkins, or tissues in with your in with your food scraps. It just kind of absorbs some of that liquid um, from your food waste, and then also. Um, line your container with a with the BPI certified bags. That'll just kind of keep everything a little bit cleaner and, and uh, neater. Um, and then also deliver your contents. I, I would say at least on a weekly basis, or if you're able to freeze them, um, you know, as as needed. But um, you'll want to you'll want to make sure your contents are are handled properly, just to reduce those odors. You can't just let it sit there for a couple of weeks and not expect odors or or critters or anything like that. So. Um, it, that's, that's the one, one thing you will have to do is, is just manage your, your, uh, your food scraps. Um, and again, uh, people do store their organics inside the fridge or freezer just to buy them a few more days. It keeps the materials a bit fresher, uh, once they're uh, chilled in a refrigerator at 35, 40 degrees or so. Um, and then what about fruit flies? Um, well, most of us have had fruit flies at some point, uh, even people who don't collect organics, uh, uh, fruit flies are attracted to rotting fruit, whether it's in your organics recycling container or in your trash, they'll, they'll find it. Uh, to cut down on fruit flies, we do suggest that you cover your organics recycling container, uh, drop your materials off at the drop site weekly, and also uh, occasionally rinse out your container with soap and water, and that'll keep it nice and fresh. Um, and then some preventive tips to ensure you don't get fruit flies. Um, if you have some overripe produce uh, on your counters or in your you know, in your trash, in your trash, well, not trash, but um, if you just have overripe produce and it's stored at your house, that's going to attract fruit flies. Um, store fruits and veggies in your fridge. Uh, wash your produce when you buy it from the grocery store or, or farmer's market um, to get to, to remove any potential eggs or uh, larvae that, uh, that sometimes is stuck on fruit if you don't wash it. Um, and then clean up any juice or fruit spills or alcohol spills. Those will also attract uh, fruit flies to your home. So those are just some ways to kind of just uh, overall just kind of uh, keep things uh, clean. Um, you know, obviously food scraps are, are not clean. They're going to be messy. But once they're in the bag and, and out of your house, uh, a rinse off of the bucket should, should uh, eliminate or keep things fresh for you. And then how often can you bring uh, your organics? As I mentioned, there's no... There's no, uh, uh, I guess, contract or anything like that to participate. It's come and go as you please. 
you can bring as many bags as you need to to the drop-off sites, uh, which are open uh, daily from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, we do ask that you only take up to two bags per visit. That um, I, you can bring as many as you need. So if you're freezing them at home, um, just grab two the next time. This ensures that uh, other people that are using the site have opportunity to grab a couple of compostable bags as well. So, uh, but when you bring them there, you can bring bring as many as you need, or you can use the uh, compostable bags and bring a couple of uh, uh, paper bags too, the brown paper bags, if they have uh, the non-recyclable paper material in them. Um, and it, we do get questions. A lot of people would like to just dump a bucket of their food scraps right into the drop-off dumpsters, but we do ask that you uh, uh, bag your material, whether it's in the provided BPI certified compostable bags or the brown paper bags. Um, it just kind of, the, the, in the summertime, the, the drop sites are going to have a little bit of odor to them just because there's a lot of food waste coming in and out of them. We do have our container service frequently, but um, the bags do help down a little bit on um, odors or attracting uh, critters to the site. So we do ask that everyone bags their, their uh, food scraps. There are some things that you wouldn't need to bag because it's not practical. And that would be um, like egg cartons that are kind of bulky and greasy pizza boxes. And um, those you can just throw into the dumpster loosely. But um, food scraps, just the, the nature of them, we'd like those bagged up, please. And uh, I, I, I mentioned this too at the top of the program, but uh, yard waste and garden waste are, are not allowed to be brought to the drop site. We just don't have the capacity to handle all that material. Um, yard and garden waste are certainly compostable materials. Uh, in fact, the mulch store manages uh, uh, organics and they also accept yard waste from people, but they manage those two waste streams separately. And they do this uh, to ensure a consistent composting recipe, recipe uh, for their various blends. So in warmer weather states, uh, they do mix food waste and yard waste together and it all gets uh, composted together. However, in Minnesota, we don't have a lot of yard waste in the winter, in, in the winter months. And so the mulch store likes to keep, they keep the yard waste separate and they mix in that yard waste with the food scraps. Um, to ensure their uh, uh, compost recipes are are uh, consistent and and always stable, and so that's how they, they that's how they would like to receive materials there for their processes. It just works a lot better. So um, as I mentioned, there are yard waste sites in Dakota County that that people use, and then also a lot of haulers do provide um, seasonal uh, yard waste collections when you buy those big uh, craft bags that that they'll have you set out, um, and then. Uh, you can also uh, search to find yard waste sites. You can email me or search the yard waste, uh, search yard waste on Dakota County's website um, to find a location near you. And uh, we, of, we often uh, get questions about uh, um, why can't I put my organics out on the curb for collections? I know um, some of you may have heard that uh, Hennepin County is, is uh, rolling out some curbside organics collection programs along with Washington and Ramsey. And I think it will be an option in Dakota County in the future as organics recycling markets continue to develop and um, haulers invest a significant amount of money in uh, upgrading their fleet of trucks and, and staffing. Uh, but for now in Dakota County, organics uh, for composting must either be done in your backyard or brought to one of the Dakota County drop-off locations. Um, and as Jenny indicated that uh, this week is International Compost Awareness Week. It, it started on um, Sunday and it, it'll last through Saturday. And we do have other activities. We really appreciate you joining us uh, here this afternoon. Um, some other things that I wanted to mention that are coming up this week. Uh, tomorrow night, actually, if you're interested in, in checking out the compost facility where, where, all, the, where all the food scraps from our drop-off programs and other uh, regional programs, uh, the mulch store doesn't just take Dakota County material, it takes material from all over the Twin Cities Metro and South Point South of the Metro. Uh, they're going to have an open house uh, kind of tour tomorrow evening from 5 to 7, and their facility is located, again, um, kind of by the, the small town of Coates. And um, so you can kind of check that out if you're, if you're curious, it's free. Um, it's from five to seven tomorrow. And we do ask that you register online. And the easiest way to register is just to go to the Dakota County website and just uh, in the search button type in organics and food waste at home, you'll find the link to the, uh, the webpage and then you can register for that free tour tomorrow night. It's not a tour, it's an open house, but uh, you'll be able to kind of check things out, how they, how they receive food waste and 
Um, you'll be able to check out those windrows, which are, which are quite impressive. They do have an aerated tube down the middle of them to, as I mentioned, that it needs oxygen to, uh, for composting to work. And so they do aerate it with, with a uh, tube of air that runs through the middle of the windrow. So if tomorrow night works for you, come on out to the mulch store and, and check it out. Um, also, if there's some uh, interest in backyard composting, a couple of classes uh, coming up. Um, in fact, one of them is uh, later tonight at 5.30 to 6.30 at the Lebanon Hills Visitor Center in Egan. Um, it's a, a training on uh, learning how to start a new backyard composting uh, pile. It's a free outdoor demonstration. So um, if that's something you're interested in doing, you can register again at the same on the county's website. Uh, uh, but that would be tonight at 5.30 to 6.30. So I, I know that's not a lot of notice for, for many of you, but if, if you uh, can make it, it'd be great. Uh, on Saturday at two o'clock at the Burnsville Library, um, there's going to just be an, a, a composting 101 that's going to focus more on backyard composting, uh, and you'll learn best practices and different techniques uh, for composting your food scraps and yard waste. Um, I think they'll cover some of the tools you might need and uh, just some other uh, tips and tricks for having a good, successful backyard uh, compost pile. And that's at the Burnsville Library Saturday afternoon at two o'clock. And then also, if the drop sites are new to you and you haven't seen uh, seen or visited, or you just maybe have some questions, on Saturday at six of our drop sites, we're going to just have some very informal open houses where we, we will have some master recycler and composters from Dakota County on hand to answer questions, greet residents, and uh, um, kind of just help you navigate uh, the uh, organics drop off program. And so, uh, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturday, you don't need to register for these. You can just stop by if it's if you're already signed up for the program and Saturday is your day to uh, bring your organics to a drop-off site, there will be some uh, master recycler composters there from 10 to 1 to, to greet people, say hello, and, and just kind of uh, offer their support to you. So um, lots of things going on this week uh, here locally um, in Dakota County uh, to, to help you uh, get going or inspire you to start composting. So um, that's kind of that's uh, the end of my program. Um, if you do have future questions after today or anytime, um, feel free to write down uh, the email address organics at co.dakota.mn.us. We also have information on our website. Again, if you just go to www.dakotacounty.us or, or Google Dakota County and then search organics, you'll get to the program page where if you haven't signed up, you can do so on that page. Or you can give us a call at 952-891-7557 and um, we will we'll, uh, help you out as much as we can. So um, with that, that's, that's all I have for now. If uh, I'll turn it over back over to Jenny to see if uh, we have some questions possibly. Yes, thanks, John. Great presentation. Uh, I did drop in links so that you don't have to do any of that searching too. So easy for you. Um, signing up for the program, I did drop in a link, that first link. Um, and then the, the last link that I just put in is all of the open houses and behind the that behind the scenes tour that John mentioned, that link is in the chat right now. Uh, so we do have a few questions as we wrap up here. Um, several of them you already answered, so I think uh, I marked those off. Um, so what happens to when people drop off non-compostable material at the drop site? Does some, some of it get to the final compost at the mulch store? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, and that does happen from time to time. Sometimes people um, will drop off items that aren't compostable, whether that's intentional or unintentional. Um, oftentimes, I'll never know that. But uh, there is a process at the mulch store to remove those non-compostable items. They do do a visual inspection and screening. Um, and then also, if it's a non-compostable item, it usually floats. To, uh, so if the first step is removing it when they see it. If it does get into a windrow, um, when the materials start composting, like a bottle and stuff, it's not going to, a plastic bottle is not going to compost. And it, th when they turn the materials, it, th those types of materials are going to float to the top. And so they do get screened off there. And then the last step is it, 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 all the finished compost, or I wouldn't call it finished at this point, but all the material that is ready for finished composting, the final stages goes on a um, conveyor belt or a trommel screen. And uh, it's, it's sized to only allow certain components or, or uh, soil blends to get through there. So if there's anything that's a non-compostable that hasn't broken down, it'll get funneled out through this big trommel screen. And they may have that, uh, I don't think they'll have it running tonight, tomorrow night at the open house, but I think they'll have that, uh, you'll be able to see that, how they how they remove those non-compostable items. And then when the mulch store uh, removes those non-compostable items, 
they have they they're they're also a transfer station. So if the uh, materials can be recyclable, recycled, they bring it to a recycling facility or haul it to a recycling facility. And if it's just straight trash, then they bring it to a landfill or a waste to energy facility. So there is there is mechanisms in place to remove uh, contaminants from the organic stream. Yes, come see it too, uh, live tomorrow night, five to seven. It should be pretty fun and a beautiful evening. Okay, uh, just a few more questions. If um, uh, this is even after we talked about milk cartons, but to reiterate, this person says, if a milk carton has a plastic type liner, can it still be included in my organics? Uh, no, it, it can't. It, any Anything that has, well, no milk cartons would we would want to put any, we won't want to put any milk cartons into the organics because one, cartons are recyclable in Minnesota and um, recycling is still uh, on the waste hierarchy. The state of Minnesota actually has a waste hierarchy and they, they favor recycling over composting. So if there's an item that can be recycled, uh, we would prefer, even if it's compostable as well, we would prefer uh, that the item is recycled over composting. The milk carton with the plastic liner, that it sounds like it, it that would be a recyclable uh, material just because I know cartons are accepted in our uh, in, in all curbside programs in Dakota County. We wouldn't accept it at the organics drop-off site. If something like that did get it, end up in, in the compost uh, dumpster, the drop-off dumpster and brought to uh, the mulch store, it would certainly get uh, sorted out of there. Great, last question here. Uh, I recently went to a coffee shop and both the coffee cup and the lid were stamped compostable. Can we trust this? Ooh, that's a great question. No, you can't trust that. Uh, manufacturers uh, are able to kind of put whatever they want on their products. And, and we do see that often where the items will, will have a stamp on there that says compostable. The only way we would accept the uh, coffee cup from this particular store is if that coffee cup had the BPI, the Biodegradable Products Institute, and um, the logo, the, their logo says BPI on it. So um, the only way we would only know, we would know that, that that item had been tested for compostability is if it had the BPI stamp on there. So if it just labeled compostable or biodegradable or uh, good for the earth, um, don't believe it. Um, it, it, it. I shouldn't say that they're not giving you the truth. I'm just saying they can put whatever they want on their packaging and there's no regulation against that. So that's why the BPI uh, seal of approval is so important because we know that those materials have been tested by an independent lab for compostability, whereas something that just has, uh, um, you know, John says this is compostable. Um, that's that's kind of what, you know, some people might put that on their products just because uh, they feel they can they can maybe sell it for a little bit more without actually paying for the research to be done on, on the compostability. But excellent question on that. And I will say too, um, often these products uh, are BPI certified, but they put it on the box that the cups or the product came in, but you never see the box. So yeah, it might be BPI certified, but how would you know that? Yeah, so and if you can't see the box um, and you don't really know, don't trust it. Well, and, and on top of that, if it's a coffee shop you visit frequently, if you ask the manager of the store to see that, you know, just say, hey, are these BPI certified? One, you'll impress the, the manager of the store and two, they know if they're buying certified compostable products or not. So um, feel free to ask the manager or staff or someone, um, you know, if it says compostable, um, be, you know, just casually ask them if it's BPI certified. And if they don't know, then, then, then it would go in the trash. If they do know, I guarantee you they'll be excited to tell you that they are BPI certified. Great. Well, that is our last question. Thank you all so much for joining us today.